temperate forests. The temperate forests um, definitely are where people move to uh, from the uh, grasslands uh, and the uh, temperate forests uh, really are are characterized by some of the um, uh, biggest cities around the world is where the temperate forests used to be. There are very few temperate forests left on the planet in their natural original. Most of them lie between 40 and 50 degrees latitude north of the equator. So remember the equator is um, at zero degrees latitude, 40 to 50 north we have temperate forests and there are a few temperate forests 40 to 50 degrees latitude south of the equator. Um, remember the North Pole is at 90 degrees and the South Pole 90 degrees south. Average rainfall higher than those grasslands, 650 to 3,000 millimeters. So you can have quite a bit of rainfall. And because the leaves fall off the trees um, and you've got adequate rainfall, uh, you tend to have very fertile soils. You get a long growing season uh, dominated by, uh, for, for a lot of these forests, by deciduous plants, plants that die back. Um, you might have a short growing season um, in some of the more northern temperate forests and uh, those forests are going to be dominated by conifers, things like pine and fir trees, spruce trees that don't lose their needles, don't lose their leaves. So depending on the length of your growing season is going to determine what type of temperate forest you have, whether they're deciduous, where they lose their leaves, or whether they're coniferous, whether they keep their keep their needles, keep their leaves, and then that way they can uh, start photosynthesis as soon as it gets warm in the spring. The amount of biomass, the amount of plant growth, can be very high. It's a very productive area um, because of these fertile soils and this high biomass production. We've cut them forests cut a lot of these forests down especially the ones with the long growing seasons and converted that to agricultural land this is where you're going to find a lot of your big cities of the world is in the temperate forest so you're going to find a huge amount of of um, population tokyo new york london washington dc chicago toronto boston moscow berlin paris all of these major cities uh, are where there was once temperate forests depending on where the temperate forest fall, fall, falls um in the uh, rainfall areas uh, we can find some of them uh, have much higher rainfalls like in the Pacific Northwest and those particular ones in the Pacific Northwest so that's um, Washington State uh, state of Oregon and up into British Columbia uh, you can find these uh, uh, much wetter uh, temperate rainforests in those areas and uh, you can see this beautiful mossy temperate rainforest So the temperate forests, you can see most of them are going to be in the northern hemisphere. So we have them um, all definitely north of the, the uh, Tropic of Cancer. So we're up in temperate areas. And then there are a small number uh, down here in Australia, New Zealand, and uh, the tip of South America temperate forests. Um, we're looking at this forest in the Pacific Northwest that I was talking about being the, the temperate rainforest. We can see very high levels of precipitation, rainforest levels of precipitation. Um, and then they have a very dry, dry summer uh, around here. So we're in New Jersey. We've got one here for, for Philadelphia. You can see fairly constant rainfall patterns um, all year and then seasonal changes in the climate where we have a winter period that is cold. Because of that cold winter period, the trees are going to lose their leaves so that they can uh, not lose water through the leaves during the cold time of the year. Um, and then once again, we're, we're down here in France. We, we have once again, we have a, a seasonal cold period where the trees have lost their leaves. But once again, 
um, in those areas, the uh, temperate deciduous forests tend to have uh, constant precipitation. So these were the temperate coniferous forests and the temperate deciduous forests uh, climate diagrams. The temperate deciduous forest then is in Eastern North America, Northern Europe um, and Eastern Europe. They have moderate temperatures, moderate moisture levels, which is why we like to live here, a five to six month season. And the trees will, at the end of that growing season, will start to remove nutrients from the leaves, take them down to the roots. And you see these beautiful displays of the uh, colors. These are the colors of the other um, pigments within the leaves. So the green pigments have been taken out. The green chlorophyll, and you're left with these anthocyanins in, in yellows and oranges and reds. Uh, the trees will drop these leaves, um, which is an important source of nutrients to go into the soil. So the detritivores, the decomposers, will break these down and the trees can take the nutrients back up the next year from the soil. And uh, that way they're not hanging on to their leaves all winter. And so that if it's cold and, and the water's frozen, they're not trying to do photosynthesis and they're not going to be losing water out of the leaves uh, during the winter time. You'll notice that some of these trees in these pictures are evergreen trees, trees that are not going to lose their leaves. Uh, the further north the, you go, the more of these you're going to find until eventually it's all these uh, conifers with needles. The needle-like leaves um, have a, a very thick waxy layer, so they're not going to lose, lose as much moisture. And they're small, so there's less surface area for losing moisture. And uh, that is their sort of like uh, adaptations to the winter drought when things are and here we can see some of the uh, important uh, soil organisms, the, the fungi that are living in the soil, just like in the tropical rainforest we have in the uh, temperate forest, we've got these, these um, uh, mycorrhizae that are associated with the roots of the plants that are helping bring nutrients out to the trees. The temperate deciduous forest, deciduous means they lose their leaves in the fall. So these are broadleaf trees that drop their leaves, relatively nutrient rich soils. And they typically, these deciduous forests have four different layers. There's the, the plants growing on the ground layer, like the, the uh, ferns and small um, herbaceous plants. Then you have a shrub layer a layer of small trees that are sapling trees. These sapling trees are waiting for their opportunity to um, have an opening in the canopy. So the big canopy trees are taking up all the light and eventually one of them will blow over in a windstorm and the sapling can grow up and take advantage of that spot of light. There's a very rich diversity of plant and animal life. As you move further, further north from the deciduous forest, you get into a mixed forest and eventually you're into the taiga or the boreal forest, which is uh, only found in the northern hemisphere. There's no boreal forest found in the southern hemisphere. It covers about 11% of the Earth's land. These are vast forests um, across uh, Canada uh, and Eurasia. They have very thin soils. The soils are so thin because uh, at one point, um, the glaciers had wiped all the soils clean off of the rocks. And so the glaciers only melted about 10,000 years ago. And so there's been less time for soil development. Uh, the soils are acidic because when the, the pine, spruce, and fir trees are dropping their needles, the needles contain a lot of uh, compounds that are uh, acidic in the soil. So when you go and you see the pine barrens in New Jersey, you'll see that the, the water there looks like a, a brown tea. It's an acidic tea, and that's coming from the acidic soils there as well. And that's a little pocket of boreal forest in New Jersey. Um, and so they are tend to be very low in fertility. There's not like that a big fall uh, bounty of leaves bringing nutrients into the soil. They're generally dominated by evergreen conifers, but there are some broad life, broad leaf uh, deciduous species such as aspen found in them as well. Very high uh, densities of, of animals, especially in the summertime. And in general, people don't like to live in the boreal forest, the soils are poor for agriculture, 
The summers are very short for growing things, and there tend to be a lot of uh, insects like mosquitoes and black flies. So here we can see um, a boreal forest, and you can see all the yellow in this one. The yellow is the aspen, and the aspen is a species of populace that will grow up after fire has gone through. So some of these boreal forests, especially in Western uh, North America, tend to have uh, quite frequent fires going through, and, uh, and then the aspen will grow up first. And then we can see uh, there's a lot of open water here. We've got these open water and boggy areas, which are basically places in the and the, and the rock that was scoured by the glaciers and left these little depressions with lots and lots of water in them. Um, this is obviously very important for a bird habitat, for migratory birds um, and insects. Uh, you can imagine that the number of mosquitoes breeding here might be rather large. What we're doing is we are logging this. There's not very many people living there to see, but we're logging it very rapidly. So the boreal forest um, is losing its um, beautiful, vast expanses. And uh, and so uh, logging the trees, cutting them for, for uh, lumber and for paper um, has been clearing them. They just clear cut these, these uh, huge areas, and that is obviously going to affect the the species found there as well. Um, people have been living in the boreal forest. I, I don't want to make it sound like they, they haven't lived there. There's, uh, you know, European cultures in, the, in uh, Eurasia, uh, in Scandinavia, in Siberia of people that uh, lived within the, the boreal forest. And obviously Native Americans lived in the boreal forest as well. And uh, it's just the uh, European... Uh, settlers and invaders in, in North America uh, chose not to spend as much time in the boreal forest because they were more used to more southern climes. When we look at where it's found then, we can see it is just in the northern hemisphere. Uh, so we have this really nice band of boreal forest uh, and uh, we can see that uh, in general, we look at the climate diagrams, the growing season is very short, so we've got uh, very long winters in the boreal forest with very short growing seasons and uh, a fairly constant uh, precipitation. But what is extremely variable is going to be the temperature. From the very low winter temperatures, we can see we're going uh, below freezing for much of the much of the the uh, the year. So this would be your below freezing portion down here. So we got very long winters. There's the freezing point. And then here, we got the freezing point right there. So we've got the temperatures are only above freezing here for about three months in Russia, Northern Russia. So they have harsh winters lots of snow, dominated by coniferous trees, spruce, pine, firs, hemlocks, um, and they're able to um, uh, do a little bit of photosynthesis on summer day, or, uh, sorry, on sunny days in the winter. Uh, if you get a uh, little, little warm burst, they still have their little needles sitting there. They have a waxy cuticle the moisture. Soils are thin and acidic. These pine needles break down slowly because it's a cool climate. Some example animals, primarily seed eaters, insect eaters, or those that feel, feed on plants next to the water or in the water like the moose. Squirrels, lots of squirrels, a lot of migratory birds that leave for the winter time. Elk, moose, deer, beaver, porcupine, grizzlies, wolves, wolverines, foxes, um, hares, rabbits, 